Alright, just making a quick video on these UPS modes. This one, you know, EcoFlow, uh, you know, EPS, UPS, same thing, right? Here's a big tip, you know, if you have a power station that has an app, and actually you can see it happening, right? You can see it happening in real time here. Uh, you know, you'd, I'd highly recommend you use this setting. I've talked about this before. And on the EcoFlow, it's this little icon right there. Basically, set it so that it's not going to charge up to 100%. You know, if you have EcoFlow, yeah, it's the charge discharge setting. Um, some of these, some of these other ones, they call them like, you know, they call them battery health, battery saver. They call it something like that. And why is this important? Because you don't want to have this thing sitting at 100%. If you're using it UPS, like I've got here, you know. You can see it, you know, you can see it for yourself here. It stopped charging at 85% because that's that's what I got it set to in the app, okay? So it's a good number. It's not going to sit there at 100%. Because this is the thing. If you're using a power station for UPS, and that's pretty much all you use it for, if you don't have a setting like this, and if you don't use a setting like this, guess what? You're just going to be sitting there it's going to be sitting there at 100%, isn't it? All the time. Like, all the time. <laughs> all the time, it's going to be sitting there at 100%. And you might say, well, that's why I bought a power station with lithium iron phosphate batteries, right? Because <laughs> it's not, you know, it's not, it's not a big deal. But guess what? It is a big deal. Uh, you know, you can have, yes, sure, you know, with LFP batteries, you can cycle them zero to hundred percent you can do it a lot if you want you know I don't recommend doing it but you can do it a lot sure you're still gonna get a ton of cycles with it but the thing is you don't want to have them sit okay even with LFP batteries you don't want to have them sit at hundred percent you definitely don't want to have them sit at zero percent so that's why it's just it's a good idea to use a setting even if you have LFP power station because then basically you can't you, you could never do that right so yeah, this information I've had up on the screen is from ChatGPT actually, which, you know, just kind of consolidates all the available information on the internet. And yeah, you know, there you go. It just, it basically accelerates the degradation of the battery. So, you know, unnecessarily really, you know, just <laughs> don't leave it at 100%. And you might also say like, well, you know, <laughs> that's why I bought LFP batteries, right? But it's the same. It's the same concept. It's just you know it does say that they're more forgiving, but it's you know the same process is still going to apply. It's just you know it's not going to be as dramatic, and you know they do say down here as well. You know, if you know if you don't trust Chat GPT, if you don't trust me, you know, check check with the company, check with the manufacturer. Well, guess what? Uh, here's <laughs> here's a Blue Eddy AC60, you know, brand new model from Blue Eddy, uh, right down here. They tell you for storage, long-term storage, charge it to 80%. That's it. <laughs> you know, they don't they don't say charge it all the way up. So, yeah, there you go. You know, again, if you're if you're using these things as a UPS, and the batteries, you know, if the <laughs> especially if the power never goes out, it's just going to be sitting at 100% unless you change those settings. So yeah, it's just, you know, it's a good idea. A lot of these power stations, they have apps that will allow you to do it easily as well. And they do mention too that, you know, I guess if the power goes out, it'll happen naturally, but you should actually discharge it once in a while as well. Even if you do charge it to 80%, you should, you know, you should try to use the battery a little bit, <laughs> you know, sometimes. So yeah, just, you know, hopefully you found this video helpful. And yeah, thanks for watching. Yeah, you can see the inefficiency here too. I'm only outputting 97 watts, but because the inverter, you know, the the inverter is being powered by the wall power here, right? This is how it, you know, this is how it it's going to switch over if the power goes out. It's just going to switch over to the battery. A lot of people think, well, it's going to switch over to the battery and turn the inverter on in less than 20 milliseconds. No. That inverter's already got to be on, so that's why you see this inefficiency here. You know, somewhere around 10 watts for the inverter. And this might not even be 100% accurate. I mean, it probably isn't. But yeah, I'll just go ahead and unplug this so you can see. You've got to try to reach around and keep the camera in the front here. All right, ready? 
there you go. So you see that I just unplugged it. The input drops to zero, but the output, you know, nothing changed with the output. So, you know, in this case, it'll run. It'll start using the battery's capacity, the battery's power, right? And this 85% will slowly drop. And then, you know, if you were to plug it back in once you have power restored, you know, it'll basically, it'll resume from where this video started off at, where it was inputting like around 300 watts, because that's what I have it set it, set it in the app to charge at. Um, you know, it'll charge, it'll input it 300 watts plus whatever the output is. So in this case, 100 watts, so it would probably be like 400 watts, right? To charge it back up to 85%. And then, as you saw, once it hits 85%, the charging of the battery will stop, but it will continue to power, you know, the, the load. 